okay so everything is correct right uh, i am audible properly and my screen is visible to all of you correct yes sir okay so as i have uh, been instructed so i'll start by introducing myself i am sripan mandal i am currently working at uh, iit bejo varanasi as a pmrf that means uh, prime minister research fellow and this is one of the deliverables which i have to complete it as a pmrf uh, that i have to conduct this type of live sessions every week and the time slot for this uh, live session will be sunday 5 to 6 pm so today i am going to deliver the second uh, live session for this course computational physics and uh, okay the last class we have i think 7 to 8 students and 2 3 are interacting so i hope today the number of students is smaller than i mean yeah just four students in here so i expect uh, gaffer subarna crafts uh, you guys have to interact right yes, rohit rohit babu hello oh, yeah so your name is rohit okay fine thank you and uh, shagnek was interacting in that class right only so i think if uh, you guys are not able to answer something i will ask him at last so let's start with the first question sorry so i think uh, you guys saw the lectures given by the faculties right hello rohit mm, sir not fully but Yeah. Yes. So you see the trapezoidal method of integration or not? The second week materials. Below a graph and we divide it into different. Yeah. yeah. And then we add it. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what it did uh, did that. Let's say. You have x. Y axis. and then you have a kind of a graph let's say this is a kind of function right so you have x you have y and then you need to calculate the uh, integration of this curve so what it means geometrically is the area under this curve right sorry uh, yeah so this will be a straight line so therefore this area has to be calculated and to do so we can approximate this by an trapezium let's say we can draw a straight line like this and we can calculate the area of this trapezium and that leads us to certain a formula like h by 2 uh fa plus ab let's say this is a a point and this is a b point and what i can do is we can subdivide the total domain in certain grids right each will have a equal grid spacing let's say h and total number of grid points let's say this has to be n so what it tells that this total length of an particular grid has to be h and there will be n number of grid points and then there will be a formula let's say h by 2 a phi that means the value of function at a point plus a p plus we can we have to sum over the number of i equals to 1 to n f a plus i h 
okay so this will be the formula right this summation will give us the values of the function at intermediate points that means let's say at this point what will be the value this this and up to this point everyone will be summed over like this and the the extrema points like fa and fb has to be put like that this is the fa and this will be fb so is it clear rohit yes sir shubhana is it clear to you yes sir okay gaffar gaffar okay so fine yeah sir it is okay for okay fine thank you so can anyone tell me what will be the answer of this question sir this is h power the one sorry Can you repeat? The triple of the integral of h is facing with it. Which one? Sir, is it? Yeah. So it is about the grid spacing, right? So let's say h is the spacing between two grid points, and if we are going to increase it or decrease it, how the error scales with that? what intuition tells us first thing is uh, the grid, if we decrease the grid spacing that means there will be so much grid points and that means we are approximating the trapezoid in a better manner right so it will be more uh, closer to the realistic curve so therefore if we decrease h the error will be minimized okay hello okay sir yeah so we can have two options let's say first one is this h inverse and another one is h to the power minus 2 correct so these two can be our options this one and that one right hello yes yeah so uh in this case what happens that the error actually scales as h to the power minus 2 okay no okay sir yeah anyone have any query chaknik yes sir uh, are you there yes sir so you get it right yes sir okay so you don't have any question with this co problem uh, oh, no sir i guess the reason for the power being 2 is the denominator in the the 2 in the denominator in the expression i guess from error analysis okay I that will that. have a kind of a calculation right so yes sir from error analysis we can do that i yes, guess yes yes it's fine uh, you can Uh, perform that also. So the right answer will be h to the power minus two. Fine. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. So here the answer will be this. The second question is that which of the following statements are incorrect? regarding the error for grid based method of integration so mind it they are asking for the incorrect statement so which one is not correct as per your understanding of the classes and the second thing is they are asking for grid based methods so first thing uh, let me ask someone let's say i am asking gaffer Gaffer, are you there? Yeah, yeah, sir. So, uh, 
सो टेल मे वॉट आर द एक्झाम्पल्स ऑफ ग्रीड बेस्ड मेथड अपार्ट फ्रॉम लेट्स ए ट्रॅपिजॉयडल मेथड सर वी यूज सिमसन मेथड अँड सम अँड सन थ्री बाय थर्ड आणि सरखा टाईप वी यूज वन इज वन थर्ड अँड अदर इज थ्री बाय एट थ्री बाय एट अदर ओके अँड फाईन सो ॲज पर युअर अंडरस्टँडिंग ऑफ द क्लासेस यू आर अटेंडिंग सो व्हॉट विल बी द ॲन्सर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन कॅन यू टेल अस सर इफ यू इन्क्रीज द नंबर ऑफ पॉईंट्स द एरर विल एरर विल रिड्यूस एरर विल रिड्यूस दॅट इज द करेक्ट थिंग राईट सो हिअर दे आर आस्किंग फॉर द इनकरेज स्टेटमेंट हिअर आर वी हॅव फोर एज ऑप्शन्स करेक्ट सो फर्स्ट वन इज era decreases as the number of grid points increase so this is a true true statement right yeah, yeah, correct yes. yeah. so second thing is the era decreases as the dimension of the integral integ- uh, integral decreases so in the uh, lectures they actually disc- uh, discuss about the multi uh, dimensional integrals also right and then yeah. uh, they told or we we also can discuss that what the errors will be errors will be like order of n to the power minus 2 right yeah yes. yeah so what happens is uh let's say you have a k dimensional space right so total number of grid points there will be n to the power k correct if n is the number of grid points in a particular dimension okay so the total i mean the error will depend upon how because from here we can write that n is equals to capital n to the power 1 by k correct so we can write this n to the power minus 2 to be minus 2 by k this will be at power right this will be in power right this thing okay hello yeah yes yes so uh-huh. what it tells that dimension of the integral is increasing sorry decreasing so what happens that k will decrease so if k will decrease then what happens this 2 by k ratio will increase right yeah so what happens that n to the power something with a minus sign that is increasing that means this error will decrease correct mm-hmm. so the second option is also correct now you have the error increases the dimension of the integral increase correct mm-hmm. so what happens that if the uh, dimension is now increasing let's say k is increasing then 2 by k will be decreasing and since it is uh, with a minus sign then what will happen that error will also increase yes mm-hmm. let's say you have first n to the power minus 2 let's say k equals to 1 okay and then you have that k is moving from 1 to 2 so that means the dimension of integral is increasing then it will be n to the power minus 1 right so this one will be greater than this one correct hello yes hello yeah yeah, yeah. so what happens that since this is greater than this one then the order of error will also increase correct so these two things are these three things both of three uh, so all of the three is are correct now the last thing is the error is independent of the dimension of the integral now what happens as you see here also that the dimension of the integral depends upon this k and the error term is depending upon this k so it cannot be independent right of the yeah. dimension of the integral so this will be the correct answer 
I mean that this is the incorrect option or incorrect statement and as the question is asking for incorrect thing so this will be the correct answer okay okay hello yes, sir. Yeah. Fine. so let's move on to the third question so which of the following statements regarding sorry yeah so which of the following statements regarding the computational cost for a monte carlo integration is not true so can anyone tell me what is monte carlo integration what is the difference between the grid based methods and monte carlo integration rohit can you tell us what is the difference between both of them डिफाइंड बाय आवर सेल्स from the first that is the grid based methods are deterministic by itself what happens that if we uh, try to integrate something like this curve we are already giving this grid points let's say we know the grid points uh, from the beginning that they are uh, we need to determine the function at those big these are the grid points right these are determined determined from beginning but when we are moving to monte carlo integration what happens that grid points are not deterministic like that grid points can be random so what happens that there we don't uh, need to bother about the uh, bother about the uh, determ determination of the function at those uh, points one by one so what else we can do we can do a statistical analysis on the uh, value of the on the possible value or the possible average of the function at those grid points let's say we have a ensemble of statistical uh, i mean statistically random points and then we can average the function at each of the points and then that average can be used for the integration part and you can find out a formula like this that v to the power m plus 1 what it means that at m plus 1th dimension the volume will be equals to v to the power m and let's say you have a function f of something x or t and then the average of f this will give you the integration value at m plus 1th dimension so the volume at m plus 1th dimension will give you the integration value of a certain function let's say fx when we are trying to evaluate the integration by monte carlo integration so the basic difference is here the uh, here we have to calculate the function at particular grid points but here we can just uh, work on the average and then we can get the um, integration okay so this is the difference of monte carlo integration and grid based integration okay is it clear yes sir yes sir okay yes, sir. <coughs> so now uh, let's move on to the question so what happens that which of the following statements regarding computational cost for a monte carlo integration is not true again this is asking for not true so we have to look for the incorrect statement so first one is the computational cost is independent of the dimension of the integral can anyone tell us whether it is right or wrong sir it's dependent right no for monte carlo integration it will not depend on the 
डायमेंशन ऑफ द इंटीग्रल आई मीन इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ सो इट इज इंडिपेंडेंट सो दिस इज अ कार्डिक स्टेटमेंट लेट्स से वी कैन राइट द कंपटीशन हाउ द कंपटीशन कॉस्ट इज वेरी इसलिए से ऑर्डर ऑफ हियर इट विल बी लाइक एन टू द पावर माइनस हाफ काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग सॉरी इट्स नॉट माइनस हाफ सो दिस इज द वे द एरर कैन गो नॉट द कंपटीशनल कॉस्ट बट ऑल्सो द कंपटीशनल कॉस्ट विल नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन द डायमेंशन ऑफ द इंटीग्रल इट विल जस्ट डिपेंड अपॉन द टोटल नंबर ऑफ ग्रीड पॉइंट्स ओके सो दिस इज इंडिपेंडेंट देन वॉट हैपन्स दैट कंपटिशन कॉस्ट स्केल्स विद द डायमेंशन ऑफ द इंटीग्रल सो इफ इट इज इंडिपेंडेंट देन इट कैन नॉट बी स्केल टू डायमेंशन ऑफ द इंटीग्रल राइट सो दिस विल बी अ इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एंड फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन दिस विल बी अ करेक्ट एंसर ओके हेलो या सो द थर्ड पॉइंट इज द कंपटिशनल कॉस्ट डिपेंड्स ऑन द नंबर ऑफ रैंडम पॉइंट्स चूजन टू इवोल्यूट द इंटीग्रल सो एज आई डिस्कस्ड दैट हियर इन वॉन्टेकलो सिमुलेशन वी आर नॉट फिक्सिंग द ग्रीड पॉइंट्स वी आर जस्ट टेकिंग सम रैंडम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पॉइंट्स एंड देन वी आर इवोल्यूएटिंग द फंक्शन द एवरेज ऑफ द फंक्शन एट दोज पॉइंट्स सो द थर्ड ऑप्शन is also true so for this question this will not be a correct answer since it is asking for incorrect statements and the last is on the number of fixed grid points so here uh, everything is random so there cannot be fixed grid points right so this will also be a incorrect statement okay okay sir yeah so let's move on to the next question so let's say for a set of random numbers that has an exponentially probability distribution ha uh, which have the form like px equals to 2 exponential minus 2x for x greater than equals to 0 and px equals to 0 for x less than 0 so we are need to calculate the mean of this uh, random numbers right so this is what we have given so how to do that can anyone tell me how should we do that sir uh, we can just plot it and see or sir we can just have a guess by looking at the function see uh, there is a formula right for uh, calculating a mean what it tells that let's say you have a uh, series of random numbers let's say xi i stands for the total i mean i can run from 1 to n if you have n number of random numbers okay so what happens is if you multiply xi by px which is the probability distribution and then if you sum over i equals to let's say 1 to let's say capital m the total number of uh, random numbers then it will give you the mean of this distribution okay anyone aware of this function or uh, the expression hello yes sir yeah so for uniform distribution what happens this px equals to 1 right and then what we need to do that uh, just we have to do this and uh, we have to just take an 1 by n right that will give us x so here the question is this so is it visible the the page the solution page is it visible to all hello yes sir let me look nice sir i think now it's better right yeah so what happens that here 
we are not uh, calculating in terms of some discrete points we are doing for continuous system right mm. so for that we are just changing the summation as an uh, integral so here uh, you see that uh, we have two forms like 2 exponential minus 2x and px equals to 0 and there is no upper or lower bound is given so in those case we take the upper or lower bound to be minus infinity to plus infinity correct and right. then what we do that we put the value of px at two different regimes here we put 0 since it is 0 for x less than 0 ok and here you put 2 exponential minus 2x I mean exponential minus 2x so what happens that then we are uh, going to calculate this so this one will be 0 right this can be just 0 yes and we need to calculate this thing this term only so what happens we can uh, take the 2 out uh, out of the integral and then 0 to infinity this thing so what we can do we can calculate this thing by integration by parts and elsewhere we can do this uh, we can use the formula if we know this beforehand right so it tells that if 0 to infinity is your limit of the integration then x to the power m exponential minus alpha x to the power n dx then you can have the answer like 1 by n factorial for gamma function m plus 1 by n and then alpha to the power m plus 1 by n and then I just put these things here that 2 is there here n is 1 right 2x is there so 1 by 1 factorial that is 1 and then gamma 1 plus 1 by 1 since m and n both are, both are 1 right so it will be gamma 2 which will give us just 1 and then uh, since alpha is 2 so alpha to the power m plus 1 by n so what happens 1 plus 1 by 1 that will 2 and that will give you 2 into 1 by 4 which will be 0 0.5 ok 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 yes, sir okay. yeah uh, sir can we think like that means uh, I understood this uh, mm -hmm. just we have computed the yeah value. Mm. but sir can we think like that since it is a one sided a uniform Gaussian function. Is and it a Gaussian function? Uh, how can you tell you this is Gaussian function? Gaussian uh, function? How? Yes, sir. Is it Gaussian? Sir, sir. Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Sorry, sir. This is exponentially decaying, right? Yeah, yes, yes, sir. So we cannot think of a Gaussian function here. Yeah, so what are you thinking? I mean, if it is Gaussian function, what will be your approach? Can you uh, share with us? Uh, sir, then, sir, for the full Gaussian function, we know that the mean of x is 0 always. No, it depends upon the peak of the Gaussian function. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, about the x equals to z about the x equals to 0, if it is Gaussian, then okay. it's 0. Okay. Uh, so, sir, means... I messed up actually by thinking it's a caution, so no. it will not work. I think. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's move on to the next question then. So uh, I think this has been discussed beforehand also. So if one use n random numbers to compute the average value of a function in Monte Carlo integration, the error scale says. Can anyone tell me what will be the answer? hello if uh, anyone is not uh, I mean following the lectures given by the faculties then also I think the last answer last answer okay so how can you get it so it's a order value uh, depend on the n to the power minus half Mm -hmm. Sir, I guess the third one. Uh, no, it's uh, actually n to the power minus f is the correct answer. So you can think of the analogy of a count uh, counting experiment. 
let's say you have 20 uh, uh, 20 students right or anything else so you are kind counting them uh, let's say you have marks right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 as and then you are counting those things 10 times so the error will scale as n to the power minus half where n will be the number of repetition of this uh, experiment here the analogy is the since you are increasing the number of random numbers then the average value will be scaled as uh, so increasing the number of random numbers will give the error to be minimized and in this case it will be like let's say sigma to the power n is sigma sigma will be the error for a particular measurement that will be defined by this way okay so let's say if it is the measurement is doing in a single uh, single time then the error will be sigma and if it is performed n times then that will be like sigma by root n so it is the correct answer for this question okay okay sir. so let's move on to the next question so here is a trapezoidal integration maybe uh, uh, the faculty also did uh, or performed an integration in the uh, in the lecture what he was giving so here uh, you have an equation or you have an integrand in the form of root over 1 minus t square okay and the upper or lower limit is I mean lower limit is 0 upper is 1 by 2 that is 0.5 so you need to calculate this integral so uh, I want to just add, uh, give an advice to all of you whenever you are trying to write this type of code for the first time you just take some simple function instead of taking this you can take like uh, let's say t okay and the upper or lower limit to be like 0 to 1 dt which you can calculate by hand also so and then you just uh, write the code and match whether uh, your result which we are getting analytically is correct or is matching with the result you are getting by the coding or numerically okay so what I have did here is I have written a program which will calculate the thing so what happens that okay just a minute okay so uh, So here you see that we uh, just divide I mean start with implicit none and then we just uh, declare how the variables are so whether they are double precision whether they are real or integer then I just uh, put the values of lower and upper limit to be a and b and then I uh, choose to give the value of numbers of grid points uh, by prompting this program and then uh, that will be uh, taken as the value of n and then this h equals to b minus a this line this will give us the width of each grid okay the grid spacing and then what happens that I calculated the value of function at a and b the extrema points as I was discussing in the first question also and then what happens we have that formula that h f a plus a b by 2 plus summation of f a plus i into h right so we calculated the 
एफ एंड एफ बी एट द एक्सिमम पॉइंट्स एंड देन वी से दैट ओके ट्रैपिजियम सॉरी ट्रैपिजल सम विच विल गिव अस द वैल्यू ऑफ इंटीग्रल दैट विल बी जीरो एट द फर्स्ट पॉइंट एंड देन वी आर ट्रेकिंग द लूप ओवर सो दिस लूप विल गिव अस दैट समेशन टर्म दैट समेशन ऑफ i equals to 1 to n minus 1 if a plus i into h so this will give us the trapezoid that summation will be here so here you can see that we are using function of t which i have to define in a um, function part within this program so here the function is defined let's say double precision again the type of t is declared there and then function is defined as square root of 1 minus t square what the question is suggesting okay so the function is defined here and then that function has been called within the main program here and then is it is going to calculate the summation and then this term and since we are Uh, just outside of the do loop then this do in uh, do loop is completed right and that will give us the trap some uh, of those uh, summation terms and then we are adding f and f with that and multiplying with h so this is the integration formula for trapezoidal method and that strap underscore sum will give us the value of the integral okay and then the program will be end fine anyone have any question uh, sir uh, can't we define the uh, whether defining the function here can't we write just the square root of 1 minus t square yeah 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 it's... that can also be done yeah yes sir so what i did then i ran this code in my terminal and what i uh, got is the value of the integral to be 0.478 which will be the correct answer for this question okay you can try by your own you can uh, first of all i will suggest that try to write uh, the codes by yourself and if you are unable you can try by Uh, just writing part wise let's say you have to think about how to algorithm can be generated that if we are trying to do some summation then we need to uh, we need to have a do loop which will give the summation and then how the trapezoidal sum that will be written as the value of the integral okay so the correct answer for this question will be 0.478 okay so maybe with some different function you will get some question in this year's assignment so you can use this type of a code uh, i suggest try to write the code by yourself first time and then if you are not able you can look for this code then okay so here the question the answer will be this one 0.478 okay Shubhana, hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you understand, right? Yes, sir. Understand. Gaffer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sir. Okay, fine. So let's move on to the next question. Okay. Yeah. So here, uh, the question is suggesting that you have ten thousand. integer random numbers and then you have to calculate the sum of those 10000 integer random numbers and you have to repeat that evaluation uh say 1 lakh times and also the integer random numbers which uh, you are generating 
that can have only two values let's say plus one or minus one and then uh, you have to store those summations or the sum of those random numbers let's say 10,000 random numbers in those uh, some array let's say you have an array like sum underscore r and you have this type of one lakh uh, elements in that array and you are just uh, calculating the summation of 10,000 random numbers one lakh times and then you put those summation values in uh, as the elements of this sum underscore r array and what happens that it will store those entries and then you need to plot a histogram using the values obtained and stored in that array and what happens that when you are trying to plot a histogram you need to set some bin width let's say here from the values they are giving uh, we, we can think that the bin size will be 10 right so you can just uh, take the difference of this and you will get the difference or the uh, width of the bins okay so what i try to to do the programming for this question so the question is asking that peak of the histogram is around some uh, some value so before moving on to this part we have to do lots of things for this program first of all you have to uh, do the summation of 10,000 numbers one lakh times so what I do that for this question is I am trying to write just a minute yeah so I am trying to write a program and as usual we are just uh, declaring the type of the variables here you see that r is given as an array and also first of all we are not uh, aware of the number of elements in that array so we are using the allocatable function and then we also uh, choose the integers and then integer parameter so what does it mean by integer parameter is these values cannot be changed throughout the program this will be the constants n equals to 10,000 m equal to 1 lakh and then yeah so then we allocate those arrays with the number of elements in them and then we open a file okay and which will store the value of random num uh, the summation of random numbers and what we do first of all we start with a do loop on i equals to 1 to m so what happens is this will start a do loop and then uh, we are generating that sum underscore r that will be an array and the ith element let's say what happens for the first time it the do loop will take i equals to 1 at the first in instance and i equals to 1 and then it will give that ok sum underscore r 1 will be 0 and then what it did the 2 j equals to 1 to n that means it is creating <coughs> for a particular value of i it is take, taking j to be 1 to n and then it is calling random number r which is a given subroutine in the fortran and then it will generate the values of r and then it is telling uh, since it is uh, asking for some integer random numbers which will have only two values let's say minus one and plus one i try to this way that if r j let's say for the first case uh, if r1 which will be less than 0.5 then i will define that rj to be minus one okay and also here you see in the first line i am just redefining the value of rj let's say if rj will have a value like 0.43 then i will define that as a minus one but if it is greater than 0.5 
let's say if it will have a point a value of 0.65 then i will define it to be plus 1 so this is just redefinition of the random numbers you can find out other ways also to do this but i did in this way i just redefined those numbers depending upon whether they are less than or greater or equals to 0.5 okay and then i just took that i just make them to be integers since it is asking for integer random numbers okay so this if loop give us uh, the integer random numbers depending upon the their value okay and then what i did that i uh, just sum of those are just uh, given there and uh, that will calculate our a second yeah okay that's fine so uh, this do loop will end then so what happens it is taking a particular value of i and then it is generating 10000 random numbers and the summation of them that will be stored in this sum r underscore i and then since the do loop is ending and then it is writing the i that means the a uh, number of i mean number of the uh, measurement and also the summation of the random numbers for that particular measurement in the file this data file so it will create a random number underscore sum dot that which will have one lakh uh, summation of uh, 10000 random numbers okay so this will have this output file which i used okay you understand up to this hello hello yes sir you understand right yes sir anyone else shubhorna did you understand yes sir rohit sir yes sir ya gaffer Sir, you are defining sum sum of r equal to zero. Zero, you are saying do is sum which you are using. Why you are using sir that? Somewhere you are using sum of r equal to zero. This Dot. one. Uh. Actually, what happens? Say, uh, say you have an array and you have each uh, i is for standing for the element number. Let's say you are have this have will uh, one lakh uh, summation or one lakh. Uh, Uh, elements within this array okay so first of all before moving on to generating the random numbers i am just giving that each of the value of that array has to be zero okay i am just assigning them and then sir, that will sir, yeah simply we have to take zero or zero dot your do your writing see, see, see. this is actually uh, up i mean uh, index uh, syntax okay like da since it is double precision then you have to write in this way acha do double precision yeah t0 that will be double for the double precision okay okay okay, okay. Yeah. so anything else no sir okay, okay fine and then uh, so we have this random number the summation of random numbers generated in a particular dat file and then what we need to do we need to do the histogram so what i did is sorry. yeah so again i written and program which will have uh, don't uh, be confused with this so i was trying to run the program in my laptop it was taking so many times so i just uh, damped the first code when it was just uh, uh calculated the 6888 uh, times of uh, sums and then i move on to this problem so what happens again i am uh, opening that file and reading the uh, numbers within that and i am giving a bin with let's say dx equals to 10 since the pro uh, question was asking for that that uh, you can see from here here this uh 1 lakh to 
1990 right so this way so this will have 10 uh, bin width okay hello yeah, yeah. yeah. so what happens is um so you are starting from this number let's say this and the number is ending at that point and you calculated a m capital m uh, which will be like number end minus number start by dx and then you allocate two arrays like num underscore hist and count underscore hist so which will contain the number of counts of the numbers for a particular bin it will be the given it will uh, num underscore hist will give you the number uh, the number or the bin itself and count underscore hist will give the value of the uh, sorry the count of the numbers which are lying within that particular bin okay so then again we are opening another file which we are using to write our output for this particular program and then we do it that do j equals to 1 to capital M that means for each of the bin size we are trying to uh, calculate the number of counts of the party uh, sorry the numbers so for the first time it will take j equals to 1 and then it will uh, again uh, the count t has been defined as 0 for the first time also this portion this portion will actually give you the bean size okay so uh, this will give you the bean size and then uh, here yeah, if condition is here that if a k that means you have an array right here you are uh, having the array of the summations also and then it tells that if a k that means a particular element or particular summation which we are uh, getting from that that file if it is greater than left what it tells that let's say you have a bean right so this type of a bean and you have a middle point here like this okay so it will be straight line obviously so you have a left let's say this is left and this is right it is telling that uh, let's say we have a value of a k which will be greater than left that means this point will have a certain value and then a k will lie in between this okay that this is greater than that then it will be obviously right of this left and if it is less than right that means this will be left of this right okay so it will lie in between them okay and then it will uh, make count to be count plus one so for each of k it will found those values which will be within this left and right and then it will count uh, those numbers and this will be updated and since the do loop is uh, ending then we have the total number of counts within that particular bin to be uh, stored in this count hist array fine and then we write those two things that is the uh, number corresponding to a particular bin and this is the count corresponding to a particular bin and then what we can do is we can calculate the mean of the Gaussian distribution as you see from this plot this is a kind of a Gaussian distribution although the width is, width is not too much which I use the GNU plot to plot this histogram.dat file and this is the output for that this is a kind of histogram and you see the mean of this value uh, sorry of this histogram is close to the zero okay it uh, whenever you run this program this mean of the Gaussian distribution will come to be close to zero which will be in my case I think it's about five so this the this is the way you can write this program and run this program
ओके हेलो ओके सर ओके सुवर्ण एनी क्वेश्चन सुवर्ण नो सर ओके काफर या या सर क्वेश्चन सर कौन या सेशन इज हेल्पफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू सर आर यू डूइंग दिस प्रोग्राम इन कोर्बु और नॉट आई एम डूइंग दिस प्रोग्राम्स आई मीन आई राइट दिस प्रोग्राम्स इन जी एडिट सो आई हैव वन टू इंस्टॉल्ड इन माय लैपटॉप सो जी एडिट इज अ टेक्स्ट एडिटर सो आई राइट देम इन दोस एंड आई कंपाइल देम बाय जी फोर्ट एंड कंपाइलर एंड फॉर दिस प्लॉटिंग आई यूज जी एन प्लॉट so that's it okay yes. you can use many more other uh, options at the here i think for fortran okay okay so okay so bye for now okay. we will bye. meet on the next thank you sir yeah thank thank you very much thank for you, all of you attending okay thank you